Hey guys, I'm Matt Faircloth. How y'all doing? Cool. What I want to talk to you guys about is about raising money. This is where you're walking the property, finding the problems, finding all the skeletons, finding where the seller lied to you, that kind of thing. You're going to do your discovery here and this is where you're building your marketing campaign then you're going to start doing the real grassroots marketing and putting the property out because you're probably outside of due diligence. Your, your deposit's probably non-refundable by now. So now you really want, we typically don't start raising until here, after day 30. Then this is where we do our big push. We're, we're building up and scaling and then we do a big push in, in, uh, on, on day 31 through 60 to try and you know, get the deal funded as quickly as we can. What do you think the most important thing to an investor when they invest passively? This is somebody not you guys, somebody that wants to invest and just get mailbox money, not, not to have to actually work for the money, that wants to just get checks in the mail, right? They don't have to be there on the webinar to get a, to get a copy of the material. Turn on investment, what'd you think? ROI. ROI, ROI, okay. Here's the thing, they're not real estate investors. This is the cardiologist that's your next door neighbor. This is the doctor that's your brother-in-law. This is the, you know, I got firefighters and school teachers that are my, that are my investors. So let me try again. Why real estate? Why should I even do this? You know, like why can't I just invest in stock? Let's start there. You guys already know why real estate. All y'all read Rich Dad Poor Dad already. That's why you're here, right? Great big world out there of people that don't know what you know, okay? So you can't start them where you are. Why is real estate investing amazing? Let's start with that conversation, right? The next thing they'll wanna know is why that team? Are you guys gonna screw this thing up or are you guys gonna actually win on this, right? Okay, now let's talk about why that city? Why Detroit? Why Dallas? Why Lexington, Kentucky? Why Winston-Salem, North Carolina? Why Camden, New Jersey? Whatever. Whatever the city is, why that city? That's where your market hunter comes in and that's where you give investors real data, not BS data, real data as to why that city is amazing and why it's a good place for them to park their cash. Then why the deal? You really got to start your webinar here. There are people that are just not going to be thinking about real estate investing. They trust you right? They're part of your database, but that's where they want to start the conversation. This is something I came up with. So let's say I buy a deal here and I'm able to show, and this, this explains tax losses. A cost seg study real quick is a way to depreciate a lot of the property really fast. Person puts in hundred K, I can show them half of that money. I can show the IRS that had a 50% loss. So they lost 50 grand. Did they really write lose 50 grand? I hope not, but they can show a negative K1 of a 50 K loss in the first year. That's why real estate. Start the conversation there. I can show the IRS you lost money that you really didn't. So we can show more and more losses and they can apply those losses to maybe other gains they may have in the future or they can apply it here when we sell it and they can enjoy a lot of the profit on the, of the sale on the property tax free. So those are just stats that we show, all data that we have. And when we do a presentation, we'll show like four or five slides on you know, what's going on in the city. Here are who the major employers are. Here's a headline on what's going on in the city. It doesn't have to be, any, it doesn't have to be a city you know, somewhere you know, a, a couple thousand miles from here. You guys could do a brief little slide presentation on why Millville is an amazing place to invest. At, at the end of the day, call the local chamber of commerce, call people that are big fans of that town or whatever it is and get them to brag on their town a little bit. They love, the chamber of commerce is the best place to go. They love to brag on their town. And we send it off to our investors so they can see where the property is and they can click on this list to see what's near the property and it does a little, pulls up the website for each thing and everything like that. Any of y'all could do something like this too. There's a little, a little interactive Google map. You know how much Google charged me to do this? Free, nothing. This is where you guys are going to go and take that awesome PowerPoint presentation and go and put it in front of your investor. Do a recorded webinar. Record it live so they can ask you questions during because those questions are gold. And the reason why is that if Benjamin asked me a question live on the webinar, I now have a recording. So when Anthony asked me that question later, he won't have to bother asking because he can watch the recording and hear Benjamin ask me the question so I can answer it, right? So you want to go live so you can have people's questions live on the webinar. Right, here's a few other tips. Record it. I, I say, I put plan for at least three. And my wife put that in there because she's conservative, but I try and knock it out in one if I can. Um, present your full offering, the whole deal. Like, I, I try and knock it out in an hour or so. Use your megaphone appropriately, meaning like use whatever megaphone you got, social media, whatever, to get people to the webinar. Call to action, and don't be doing the BS, like I only got three left, run to the back of the room, but let people know that, hey, 
Just so you know, I have to close on this thing in 45 days. You're just giving them facts, that's it. So make sure that they are, they are clear. The next thing that we do is we ask them to make soft commits. I'll talk to you guys on how to take soft commits in a second and what that means. But you're really building a funnel, right? You're getting a bunch of people and you're going through a funnel here and you're squeezing out maybe one to two people and it's okay that you have 30 people sign up for the webinar, webinar not all of them invest. The stats that I've seen is somewhere around 50% of the people that say they're gonna to come to your webinar actually do. Of the folks that show up to our webinar, we find around between five and 10% actually convert and that's okay. Here's two different ways you guys can use to raise money. We use InvestNext, but you can use other ones. There's um, Juniper Square, but InvestNext is a portal that allows your investors to log on to and make a soft commit. A soft commit means, yes, I'd like to get an Alicia's deal, but I'm not going to give her the check just yet. I want to talk to Alicia and I want to have a conversation or whatever, but save my spot in that deal, right? So you want to push hard for soft commits and you'll find that you'll get around 50%. You want to push for about 50%. If you're raising a million, you want to push for 50% more of that in soft commits and you're going to lose the rest through attrition for people that are going to get bored, they're going to give the money to somebody else or whatever it is, but you're going to convert around 75% of those that make a soft commit. Software like this, like the, the web portals, they can put on your company website, there's a little login button at the top and then people can get in there and put their money in and all that kind of stuff and they can wire you the money through the system, they can, you know, the, the whole thing's there. Or, y'all can go cheap, y'all can go free, here's how you do it free. You, uh, on your webinar, you have them, have them fill out a Google form, okay? And what I like about Google form is just one link. They fill out the form and it's an individual form for just them, but then you can set up Google form, I think through Zapier, it might do it itself, to spit their information to, into a Google sheet, right? So then what I, I, I put the Google form out on the webinar. If you guys wanna get really fancy pants, you can use Bitly to, mat, to really collapse down the Google form you know, web links, it's not like this mile and a half long web thing, Bitly can collapse it to like, you know, nine, you know, nine, five digits, nine digits, whatever it is. So they go to that, they fill out their form. Yes, I'm interested, I'd love to get in. Yes, I'm accredited, you know, and I wanna give 50K, right? So then that's a soft commit. Then you pick up that old school telephone right there and you close them and you get them to commit to the deal. When you get them to a yes, you send them a DocuSign, okay? You might have to pay for this, but hey, that's why it's $1 sign. I think DocuSign has a free version, but it's like up to a certain signatures, right? So then you go from, you get them to convert to a yes, you immediately send them a DocuSign right there, right? And then they, they commit to the money, and then you email them and say, hey, congratulations, you have a deal, right? These softwares cost a little bit of money, but they do, and they do all that stuff for you, but up until recently, this is how we did it, you know? Like we're using Google Forms, telephone, grinding it out, man, you know? You can do it, you can use DocuSign for anything now. So once they sign this, they're in. Right signature, hello sign, there's a, there's a billion of them out there. Them signing your paperwork is what enables them to be able to send you the money. The process really looks like you call them, you get them to a yes, you DocuSign on the paperwork, they sign everything, then you send them your wiring instructions. And then they wire you, then they wire you the money and off you go. Um, so, all right, here's what you guys want to do is uh, this has happened to us. It happens to a lot of people where you go get into these deals and you're on time. Remember we're approaching the end of 60 days here. So the last six, the last 30 is where you really ought to be cleaning things up and get ready to close, right? Let's pretend that you end up at 50% or less on soft commits. She's going to raise a million dollars, but she only comes up with 500 K. Oh no. Oh no. So, she does another webinar, that's option number one. Do another webinar, get another megaphone. What we found is that certain investors wanted to have certain conversations. Right now, a lot of people want to talk about, you know, where's the market going, you know, how stable is your deal, what's the interest rate, you know, and a lot of savvy investors want to talk about tax losses. That's option one, new, more people. And we've, had, we've, we've had to do this a few times. We've had to just make some calls and change the deal up. Like maybe the deal wasn't sweet enough, maybe it wasn't attractive enough or whatever. But don't wait till the day of closing to be like, oh man, I don't have all the equity I need. Around 45 days in is where you need to be gauging how your, like how your equity is doing. If it's coming in quickly, if it's slow, because then you're gonna get off to the races and be 60 days, you know, you get 30 days to closing, right? And I, we did, like I said, we were doing two webinars a week at one point to raise money. If that's what it takes, you know, and sometimes you end up having to pull other people in to help you. There are people that you can bring into your deals and maybe restructure the capital, give them a little bit of your equity, whatever, in exchange for helping raise money for a deal. All right, 
what do you do? What do you do if your deal is really coming short and you're making that face, right? So, <laughs> if your deal's still coming up short, and we've had to do this a, a few times in the beginning, uh, a syndicator typically takes an acquisition fee of the purchase price on a property, which could be a lot. If you're buying, you know, reasonable size multifamily properties, it's uh, like between one and two percent of the purchase price. So. Uh, that can be a lot and you can get stars in your eyes and dollar signs in your eyes when you look at that, but you can sacrifice your fee and say, okay, I'm gonna defer my fee. And if you guys realize this, you can keep raising equity for your deal after you close. So you can buy the apartment building and then keep raising equity afterwards. We've done that a few times too. And you raise up additional cash that you need, you raise up enough to pay yourself the fee, you pay, yourself, you pay your fee last. Um, and we've, we've also did a deal, uh, I talk about this in my book, Raising Private Capital, about how we had a ton of money stolen from us two, day, two weeks before closing. Three quarters of a million got stolen from me two weeks before closing on a deal through a 1031 exchange guy who actually turned out, turned out to be running a Ponzi scheme, right? And so we found out about it two weeks before closing, like, oh man, so we need that money for the closing on this deal, what are we gonna do? We went and found a short-term loan to bridge us so I could close, and I just kept raising afterwards. I mean. There's you know, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went in there too. That's, that story's for another day. What's the most important? Making the most money for yourself, getting that fee, right? You know, or closing the deal and moving forward, right? I can tell you the way that we were able to raise, you know, and I wasn't just showing you guys to pound my chest or whatever, that we raised 21 million. I still pinch myself that we were able to do that, but, and, and I feel very lucky that we were able to do it, but the reason we were able to raise that kind of money is because we did the right thing along the way. Right? And I didn't think about my fee first. If you guys put yourself last, put your investors first, I can promise you that these things will get easier and easier as you go. Your investors recognize that you put them first and they'll start telling their friends about you. My first, the, the deal that we just closed was called DeRosa Capital 15. I, it's not because that's my lucky number, it's just because that's the last, like that's, that's the, the, the number of syndications we've done, right? DeRosa Capital 1 was a guy my wife went to college with they gave me 50K to buy two single family homes in Trenton, okay? That's how I got started. Not by buying apartment buildings and certainly not by writing articles for bigger pockets. Way before that, okay? You guys can do that too. There's no difference between me and you.